You're now listening to episode 73 of Signed In, an Xbox 360 podcast. Record on July 10th, 2011. Find us online at signedinpodcast.com. Signed in host. A signed in host. Where do you have two of those? Uh, yeah, but this is a, his stealth form. Like, He's got weapons poking out at the same time. Uh, <laughs> those are weapons. That explains a lot. Like why I'm happy to be here. Hey everybody, welcome back to Signed In. I am Jeremy Superfro33. I'm Craig Prop Dresser. And I'm Sean Shonix. We're not really using that, are we? Yeah. Awesome. We use everything. I know, that's true. The show is completely unedited. Like it's candy. like a sausage factory. We use everything. <laughs> it is like a sausage factory in here right now. There's there's a visual for everybody at home. And oddly enough, it's not really the visual that counts, it's the smell. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I like to give you know, an atmosphere to the show. And all the workers are on strike. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. How is everybody? <laughs> Do it all right. I'm good. Are you guys I'm good? good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How are you? I'm not good. What? I'm not doing my, my hosting duties wow. the last two weeks. You failure. You're off the That's show. That's awesome. Here's the thing. <laughs> and I don't know if people know this about me. You, don't... you can probably gather it if you, if you pay enough attention. <laughs> if you look real hard for the clues. I'm not a big reader. Like as a regular rule, yeah, like a book I reader, read books, uh-huh. there you comic go. books. There yeah. you go. A Once book. in a while, yeah. Even those though are scarce because I like to call I, myself a ignore. reader. <laughs> yeah, you're not. <laughs> and I know I'm <laughs> not, but I like to call myself a reader. <laughs> but I started reading like a couple books because yeah. I'm reading the Game of Thrones books Sweet. because you know they're pretty new and I don't think anybody's really even I, heard of them. I haven't heard about it, <laughs> so I'm jumping on that before it gets like you know really big. So you can say I was there first. Yeah, like and totally in first. Face. <laughs> like, like I think that there's a nice. huge potential here, and everybody should check them out. But <laughs> yeah, the, get the, in now before anybody even knows I, about it. I agree. Uh, the Harry Potter uh, movie <laughs> just—I don't uh, even know what this is. I know. I was like, "What's going on?" And I'm into that now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into that now. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, this is my story about me being lame host, right? Uh, I started reading the Game of Thrones books, and mm-hmm. that has been. All of my time suck, and I've been making poor decisions like reading books and not um, playing video games. I'm going to see if I can find a tiny violin sound for this. <laughs> you should. <laughs> you should do that. <laughs> just play in the background with my like sob story. Well, it's just kind. Of, it was kind of it, the last two weeks though for games wise. Is uh, XBLA was popping because yeah, there was it, a ton it, of stuff coming out. Yeah, on there was. But uh, really, disc wise, I have nothing yeah, really. Been... Yeah. We had that last episode where there was like a ton all of a sudden, and then right. now it's been a couple weeks again where there hasn't been a Didn't lot. Did you have a backlog from last episode? <laughs> I did. <laughs> but, Game of, but Game of Thrones was Look, in I was giving myself an out, and you had to like totally be a dick about it and like well, step all know, over it. I thought that was my job. I'm hoping it is. Uh, I'm hoping people at home don't remember that shit. That's like every time we go, oh, yeah, we're going to talk about this next time, and then we never talk about it. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's caught up on that yet or picked up on that clue. I don't. I don't know if anyone noticed that twenty episodes ago we were a Wii podcast. So. <laughs> like, like our like we're gonna have Monday Night Combat game night, right? No, well, we still will. We I mean, still will. <laughs> we can in the future hey, at any time. I, I, it's it's the end of the semester for me. I was gonna try to put something together, but I've been busy. So. Until they shut that server down, we're good. <laughs> Maybe September. By ba- September, hopefully. You know the bad thing. The, sh- the, server down. <laughs> the bad thing about Game of Thrones, like I hadn't heard i'm i'm clueless because that's me you were the people i was talking about that's why i'm on the show but uh i i always thought it was a tabletop game (laughs) well it was a card game they do they did make a card game out of it so you're okay good Mm -hmm. then i wasn't but the game is based on the book (laughs) yeah well good well as long as long as i don't feel and then the show is based on the card game (laughs) that's true (laughs) it's because I haven't watched it, so I'm assuming it's a live action Yu Gi Oh. Is. is that how it works? You know how, like, on the ESPN 14, they would show the uh, Magic the Gathering championship? Yes. That's what this is. HBO sunk a lot of money into it. They put backgrounds in, like, there's a lot of CGI stuff. The That's cards awesome. actually have, like, creatures and people st- Do people like, pop shout out of them? as they throw down their card and, like, yes. creatures pop out? Yeah, and there's, like, swords and there's it's actually It's completely like, voiced over. It's okay. I don't know, you know. Emmy wise, I don't know. <laughs> Emmy wise, I see a lot of Emmy talk, and it just seems a little odd. But 
This is a much better podcast how, than anything video game was. How long until the Game of Thrones XBLA <laughs> game? I hope not very long. <laughs> All right. We'll stop talking about and, Game of Thrones <laughs> and my inability to uh, do anything else other than read books lately. Uh, and how about some video games? All yeah, right. We got some. If we must. <laughs> Transformers, Dark of the Moon. Yes. Mm -hmm. We all got that to talk about. Yeah. Um, I might talk a little bit about the three -er, fear three. I don't know how I'm supposed to say it. it has a three in the place of the E, but nobody holds to it because it's, they realize how ridiculous it is. I think <laughs> you can't put it that You're way. You're supposed to read it back and forth. You read fear and then you read backwards for reef rat <laughs> reef three yeah, i don't know that doesn't work uh and i also played some of the new captain america pinball table for pinball yeah. fx that is awesome it is pretty cool and a couple indie games but yeah i got a few indie games and uh three xbla xbla titles to talk about galaga legions dx half minute hero super mega neo climax and dead block <laughs> Is there an exclamation point on that? Uh, there should be. Okay, but there's there, not. I don't believe there is. Such an error. I know. Man, how did I miss? What's the name of that thing? It's, it's The whole thing is Half Minute Hero Super Mega Neo Climax. Oh, so that's what that SM is. Yes. Okay, all right. I was like, what is it SMC for? Although I put 30 Minute Hero on that one. But um, <laughs> 30 Minute. Uh, it's a three, different game. Yeah, three games really held my attention these last two weeks, and that was Full House po Poker. Like, I haven't played that game, but I've been playing a lot of that. Yeah. Trenched bought that. Oh, cool. Oh, I got some things to say about that game. Excellent. And then, of course, Transformers, which yeah, yeah. I, it pulled me in. So. Yes. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> All right. Shall we start with the indie talk, then? I guess. Oh, uh, I should mention, since we're talking about indie games, we mentioned uh, Summer Uprising last episode, and we they did. have... So the voting has begun, and they've narrowed it down to the 25 finalists for the eight places that will be uh, given uh, based on the, the developers, the mm -hmm. designers and stuff. And then the last two are to be voted on by fans, just open voting. Cool. So uh, pay attention to that website again uh, to keep keep tabs on what's going to yeah. be in there. And a lot of good choices for the 25 uh, finalists. So I will throw it in the show a, notes. A wide variety of things. I was very impressed with that. Cool. So just check our website, and we'll have the link to there yeah. as well. Excellent. All right, so let's talk about some games that came out in the past two weeks, though. So the first one I want to talk about is uh, Monster Shooting Monsters from Monster Bite Games. It's 80 points, and it's a neon twin-stick shooter, uh, so you're probably pretty familiar with that. And mm -hmm. uh, your main character is like this little tentacled monster thing with like a tank gun on its back or whatever. And uh, it's you're in a very small... Not a very small box, but it's, you know, not too much wider than your screen. And, you know, monsters come in and, and you know, they're mostly circles and things like that. And you're mm -hmm. shooting them. They try to shoot back. Uh, the one thing that I really liked about this, though, is uh, the tether thing that you have. And so if you hold down, I think, one of the triggers, then a tether shoots out from straight ahead of you. And will start swinging around and it'll try to latch on to an enemy. And once it does, then it'll start swinging them around like a big club nice. as you hold down the trigger. Or you can let go and hurl it off towards a wall or something. Um, and so you can use that as sort of a defensive shield sometimes. That's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. And then uh, there are these huge enemies that have like these shields, like these plated shields. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, they're in little segments. My favorite thing to do is just run over there and just like keep shooting out the tendril to just keep pulling off plates and then hurling them off. <laughs> so it's like I'm peeling the peeling the monster. So it's it's a lot of fun, and uh, you know it's a twin six shooter, so you should be pretty familiar with it. I think the bumper buttons fire like a little missile explosion thing, um, and yeah, it's it's, it's pretty nice. So um, I recommend checking that one out. And then another one that I checked out was Stick 'Em Up Two Paper Adventures uh, from Never Don't Play and Whatever Games. Two hundred and forty Microsoft points there. You I didn't really take more concern about the name, so just. What's whatever. <laughs> whatever games <laughs> whatever games I'm not even <laughs> I can't be bothered <laughs> it's right <laughs> um, I didn't I never played stick em up one <laughs> or something like that but uh, was there a continuation of the story I don't think so. It's, yeah. it's and so they. This one is a, but I don't know how to compare it. And this one's mul yeah. multiplayer, and uh, it's kind of a you know a paper craft sort of looking thing, um, and it's a lot of fun. It's you know just a side scrolling uh, shooter, but you also have like vehicles and stuff like that. And uh, um, I don't know. It, it just the whole design for everything in there is really well done. Like even the opening menus and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And uh, if you watch the trailers, because you can only play through the tutorial level. That's the only thing that you can play in the demo. Um, 
but it also has a trailer like attached to it so you can watch the trailer and so uh, you can see a bunch of the other levels they're like riding around in like little uh lunar lander carts and you know uh uh all sorts of crazy stuff and it's got competitive multiplayer as well i th- I'm not positive. I think it's only local multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't get a chance to check that out, but um, yeah. So, but it, it, it's it's a lot of fun. It's pretty high action, and uh, the controls are really responsive. And uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Cool. cool. Uh, I checked out Rainbow Runner. Did you guys take a look at that at all? I no, I, I didn't. I looked at the screens and it looked I really cool, but it looked like uh, one of those like get to the chopper or one yeah. of those like where you had to run or so, jump so you, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Prog Pixel cool Games. Uh, Prog Pixel Games. It's eighty points. Uh, it is a side scroller uh, shooter, mm-hmm. so a twin stick shooter almost. Where you move with the right stick, you move your person lo- uh, left and right on along the screen. Uh, you shoot with the right stick. Uh, in any direction that mm-hmm. you want to. There's enemies that come at you, but there's also these bars that go straight up. And so it's very pixelated looking. Yeah. And your character can change colors. So your color is determined by oh, the, I did see this. The, yes. the buttons. Mm-hmm. And so you'll change to the yellow, blue, green, or red. Yeah, yeah. And so when those bars are coming, when you go across those bars, you have to match the color that those bars are. Right. Also, you have to shoot enemies while you're doing all of this. Right. Uh, so it's basically just a score and the, like if you don't get hit then your combo meter goes up and it's just as far as you can get and there's yeah. a boss at the end of the level that you have to fight and then it's kind of like that outland you know that kind of yeah, style yeah. where you have to match the color of sure. the bullets and you yeah. absorb them basically and right. don't take damage from them and so then at the end of the level there's this like pterodactyl thing that's shooting you uh, and it's all like neon colored <laughs> nice. but he'll shoot different bullets you know and you'll have to match the color so you don't take damage um I, I I thought the game was okay. I really like the style and I like the presentation and I mm-hmm. like the music that's going with it because cool. it's this like pseudo techno thing that's going mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Uh, and it's really uh, pixelated looking, and so I really liked it. I it's not for me. I wouldn't buy it, but I think definitely if it's something people should check out in case it is yeah. for them. Uh, I did have some issues with some of the controls, and I didn't look to see if you could change the control options. But having to like shoot with the right stick but then change the colors on the fly with the buttons. Oh, I you're see. You're taking yeah. your thumb off. Yeah. And it's almost yeah, like, they did, you know... They'd have to move them to the triggers, They'd probably. move them to the triggers. Yeah. And at that point, it's like, you know, with a scroller, I just don't even know... You can also jump with the bump with the triggers, mm-hmm. but I didn't have anything that I needed to jump for. And I don't know if there is options later on where you're also jumping over pits or maneuvering sure, over yeah, things like that. Know. And that might make sense. But it, it really, in that first level that I was playing, it didn't feel like there was any need for you to have to move mm-hmm. forward and backward on the screen. And it's almost like I would rather that be the shoot, you know, and sure. then the trigger yeah. be the shoot. And you could always have the buttons to move. Right. It was a little awkward to move from those. So, you know, when I tried a couple of the harder difficulty levels, it was really, really tough because mm, yeah. that stuff was coming really fast. Yeah. Uh, and I know there's a couple other play modes on there. There's like a endless mode and there's like a boss attack where I think you just, you know, go through all the bosses mm-hmm. rapidly. Um, and then there's some other wall jump thing. So that might use some of the jump stuff um, where you're jumping over obstacles or sure. jumping from one to another. But, you know, check it out because it is an interesting look and presentation. Yeah. Uh, I just had some issues with some of the control wise. Yeah, so. yeah. It looked cool. like light, right? Yeah, it was kind of I like that a lot. It was like, yeah, it was a really neat looking game. Hmm. I would play it on acid, too. I'd recommend that. Oh, <laughs> dang. <laughs> well, you Hard play all board. your games on acid. That's like true. <laughs> He Wait, did. me or me or Sean? No, you. Oh, that's true. A listener's choice. <laughs> <laughs> you you make the call at home, kids. <laughs> Who is Craig talking about? Send your answers to comments at signedinpodcast.com. Oh, that's funny. I don't have any indie games because I'm none? a loser. I'm a loser. True. So Baby. why don't you kill me? Uh, so I also played a I game might. called Labyrinth from Subtle Aberration. It's for 400 Microsoft points. It's a 3D... Uh, sort of exploration uh, game that also incorporates some small puzzles. So kind of like Myst and, mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. vein of games. Uh, and so you're a young woman who wakes up in this labyrinth and you're not quite sure why you're there. And there's this tower and you're trying to make your way to the to the tower. And, it, and that's kind of nice because you can see the tower over the top of the hedges. It's a hedge maze, at least in the demo. Um, although the demo also gives you the full map. I, I'm guessing in the real game, the map kind of develops as you explore areas. But You would you would hope. I, I, I would think so. Yeah. It would be weird to have a labyrinth game when they give you the map. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> good point. Uh and uh, you walk around, you know, I was walking around and collecting fruit and you have, you, you know, you collect these fruit things. I don't, I'm not sure if they're for health. I used one to open a door 
And then you also have health. So I'm guessing there's some points in the game that are a threat to you, but I didn't reach that in my eight minute demo. Um, Although to be fair, in real life, you do try to open doors with fruit. I, I do. <laughs> so it might just be your interpretation of what's happening. <laughs> your real life. I had to put a fruit on a flower. <laughs> And that opened the door. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, but there was no real threat uh, in the the eight minutes that I played. But I did get to an area where I had to open another door and use it, do that by stepping on stones in a particular sequence. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, So it, it was pretty nice. I mean, uh, the graphics are okay. They, they do feel more in the line of, you know, the Mist era. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, it is a full 3D game for a small amount of uh, space and all of that, so that's completely understandable. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if it's something I would get, but it was a it was an interesting diversion from you know all the twin stick shooters and various yes. other things. It's nice on to there. see different stuff on there. Yeah, exactly. Was, speaking of that, did you guys did any of you guys try that Fatal Seduction? <laughs> I game? did not. I that, no. Okay, with the chalkboard looking yes. stuff. That was just we. I, the screenshots. Yeah, I gotta tell you, it almost had me by the name. You should check it out. <laughs> I, check it out just for what it does. Uh huh. It, Silver Dollar Games, which, which I think that they put out a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it was like I think it was a dollar. Yeah. Is all. I well, that's, so. all it's, Silver Dollar games are a silver dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little slow. <laughs> for future reference, I'm saying. <laughs> okay, thank you. I uh, got it. Um, it's a side scroller, like uh, hack and slash, like kind of thing where you're, you know, it's it's moving forward, but there's enemies that come on, and you have to attack them. Okay, it's really messy and okay. it's really you know bloody and over the top. It's, oh, okay. it's a very adult game, I think. Yeah, sure. um, mature, I should say, not adult, because that implies <laughs> a better game than <laughs> than this is. But uh, <laughs> you know, you're attacking these demons, and there's a story that's going on, and it's really like just creepy and weird. The game isn't done well, but you know what I mean? It's, yeah, but yeah. it's, it's doing something different on there. Sure. And it's something that is at least thinking above like that, you know, the normal, like we said, twin stick shooters and stuff. Right. Yeah. And not that there's anything wrong with them. But. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, but like you said, it's sometimes it's yeah. nice to have different that, stuff. I mean, it's, it's very horror based and right. like this weird just story going on sure. and lots of like voice work and stuff done. And so it's it's interesting to just check it out. But yeah. I don't know if I necessarily <laughs> would recommend <laughs> it. it. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. really weird and yeah. out there. Too. Yeah, that's that's another reason why I'm so excited about Summer Uprising. Because like I said, there's a there's a really Bunch nice of variety stuff. of different things being uh, put forward. So cool, cool stuff there. Well, check that out because it's a little odd. <laughs> Sounds like a good enough reason to me. <laughs> uh, and then the last uh, indie game I have to talk about, I know, I don't have 12. What's up with what? that? Um, is Loot Fest <laughs> from, uh, not Lufa, but uh, Loot Fest from Game Farm, 80 points. And so this is a I play this too. really sim simple sort of dungeon crawler in a way. Mm -hmm. And I, I picked this up. It, it was a lot of fun. And... Uh, the well, why don't you talk about it, Jeremy? I, well, it's I'm essentially it's essentially just a uh, 3D dot game heroes that yeah. came out for the PS3 last right, year, right. Uh, but in a dollar format, right? Uh, you know, so not as you know polished or you know in depth <laughs> jam packed yeah. as that stuff was, but right. uh, it has the same general feel and look, and I enjoy that quite a bit. Right, that's um, why I thought you would like it. It's basically a Zelda game put in a 3D format you know, with everybody being pixelated out. Yeah. Uh, and you're walking around, uh, you, you can buy items mm -hmm. and I haven't purchased the game yet. So it wouldn't let me buy anything in game. Right. Except for pie. The, yeah. That would, that's <laughs> you can, it. You can buy pie. Uh, and that is your healing you yes. know, at that point, but you're just going around basically killing all these enemies that uh -huh. are free roaming around this huge map, which I think is randomly generated too. I think it's different every time. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure. I've only played it a couple times. Um, the first so, time I didn't get very far. And you're collecting items and gold and then yeah. buying other items. So you're like getting bigger swords and getting a bow so you can do range attacks Shields. Uh, and then going on this mission By or whatever. Hawks. Yeah. So there are three bosses in the world and yes. they're all in castles. And so you can buy a hawk and a pigeon. Uh, they're relatively cheap, and then uh, you let you set them free. The hawks fly towards the next boss that you need to fight because you have to fight them in order. Actually, oh really? Uh, yeah, because your weapons upgrade after each boss, okay. and so you can't really take on uh, the third boss or whatever without the first two weapon upgrades. <laughs> and uh, and so yeah, the hawks fly to the next boss. The pigeons fly to the nearest um, town. Town. Thank you. And. Uh, you, know, you can try to run off after the hawk or something like that, 
Uh, but good luck with that, because <laughs> uh, they go as the crow flies, and they'll yeah, just and be like, like go through a mountain. straight over a mountain or something like that. But they give you, a, I mean, because they go in an absolutely straight line, so it's kind of a pointer for you. I At mean, least tells you the direction you yeah. need to be moving. Toward. Yeah, because the map is helpful. pretty big. Yeah, it is pretty big. And so, you know, it's it's in the full, like, when you look at your map, it's in the squares, kind of like the Metroid style. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a big, huge square, and then you fill in little pieces as you go into the areas they uncover, and you kind of yeah. see what they are, and you learn the terrain, or get the terrain. Yeah. Uh, but when you're moving in the in the game, it's not the Zelda style where it's like, you know, they scroll to the side to a new square. It's it's free moving and they're all connected. Right. It's very 3D dot game heroes if anybody's ever played it. So sure. that's probably the easiest way to explain it yeah. for those. Yeah, folks. that was what I was reminded of. Um, I ran into some issues with some lag. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it was a little choppy for me when I was playing oh, it. Oh, I didn't have that experience. And I was also finding that's not always when I use my attack button that I would attack. Yeah, well, yeah, there's a little bit of... Um timing issues mm -hmm. or something like that i don't I, th I think you just can't spam it uh and that like, might be like i think there's like i think there's a slight delay before you can attack a second time um and then i think the better the better swords reduce that and i think the the better swords are like you know bigger swords and you know wider so they can hit enemies more easily and i think they might stay out a little longer when you attack because it's not like just shing out and back it's yeah they, they kind of sit out there for a partial second i would imagine it goes that same route because that's how that other game the 3d game oh it's it, okay yeah. i mean you eventually got to the point where your sword was across the entire screen <laughs> like it was <laughs> this doesn't get fat. to there it's this awesome doesn't get to there although i think they were talking <laughs> about um when i because i got through the game it's not a very long game you know yeah. you can probably finish it in about 20 minutes or so um but it's it's you know simple and fun and uh very cheap but then at the end they were talking you know mentioning something about like see you at uh uh loot fest 2 yeah whatever. i looked up their website actually and oh, they were uh -huh. talking about working on two and oh, hopefully excellent. by this winter that they're going to have it out cool. um but then they were also discussing the fact that there's no save option and right but the way that the world generates and randomly it would be kind of impossible to right, have a save right. option and have it carry over so and and there's no real need for the save option because like yeah, I said, it's the, quick play the game goes really, really pretty quickly. Yeah. So. And I also read on their website that there was a bug right now oh, that really? they're hoping to fix that if you buy the game in game, in -game? It, oh. it transports you to a boss and kills you instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so he's like, well, that might not be so helpful to people. <laughs> It might be a little... Yeah, I didn't buy it in game. I bought it outside the game. <laughs> He's that's like, that's funny. kind of the ultimate like piss off, like piss on you. <laughs> Congratulations! Thanks for buying this. Thanks for buying it. You're done. This. <laughs> so I think they're working on fixing that, just to let anybody know. <laughs> that's good. That's if you good go that route, that's nice. <laughs> that's if uh, I don't have any other. Yeah, that's that is all the good? indie games we got this episode. We got a couple XBLAs, right? A few XBLA. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do we want to start with? Galaga Legions. That'll work. Galaga Legions DX from Namco, 800 Microsoft points. Galaga. Uh, now, I am a big Galaga fan, actually. When, I am, too. When I can was, tell by the shirt. When there was, <laughs> when there was uh, uh, Arcade Downtown in Iowa City, uh, it had a Galaga machine. I plunked a lot of quarters into nice. that sucker. Um, and, you know, I got to say, this doesn't really feel like Galaga. No. At all. Well, it's DX. No, but I like like Pac Man. Triple H put it Pac Man out or something. Yeah. C X E Z Z Top. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is. Pac Man Z Z Top. <laughs> uh, you know, that that still feels like Pac Man. It's still got the elements of Pac Man. Yeah, you know, right. Even if I see it, where you're even if it's focused in a particular direction, you know, you still have to time your turns. Well you this still, has bugs. Yeah, but they don't shoot at you. I mean, the whole thing with Galaga, they would come in, you know, their patterns and swirl yeah. around and then move into formation and all. And that stuff still happens. But then, you know, a lot of the fun was dodging shots and yeah. trying to take out the bugs. But now it's like, now it's try to shoot the, the bomb, essentially. Yeah. And then everything explodes. That's the DX part. I know. <laughs> but extreme. But it doesn't really feel like there's, I mean, other than the, the bugs swirling around the screen and trying to not get hit by those, yeah. you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's but weird. I, and so, I didn't care for the Galaga Legions very much either, if I remember correctly. And it sets off all those chain reactions, which is a big thing, too. Yeah, yeah. In there, you know, about, like, lining up the bombs and yeah. they blow up like a boss. Because the boss, when right. you kill the little mini boss thing that's there, when you kill that, it blows up as well. Right. And so then you can, like, line up these chain attacks, basically. And if you blow it up in the trajectory of the boss, then they all blow up and everything's just nuts and blown yeah. up. I was just waiting to get grabbed and so I could have my ship and get my ship back. 
have extra bullets. <laughs> but that didn't that happen. happen. I just sat there and waited one time, and it didn't do nothing. I don't even remember playing the lot like the Galaga. Yeah, I don't. Me- I, I just remember I didn't care for it very much. We may not even talked about it much on maybe, the show. Maybe it didn't I, leave a great impression. So, are you guys all like kind of left lukewarm with? With this, I, that... there's a lot of things I like about it, but I can turn and uh, play any of my Radiant games. Yeah, that's a problem too, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> any of cheaper, them, yeah, and any of them, and I'd still get the same. Almost, I'd get a greater satisfaction from them than this yeah. one. And the visual style just didn't capture me the way that the the Pac Man Championship Edition. It, ones. It, there's it, a lot going it on. It really works with it. Really works with Pac Man because yeah. of that. Just that. But this just looks like any other twin. Like I said, Radiant Games. I mean, it looks like any other twin stick shooter now. Yeah. Even though it's the, the, there's a little bit of it. That's what I kind of liked about it was the the way that the shooting worked at times. Mm-hmm. But at times, I felt it a little bit because you use it like a twin stick. But mm-hmm. then you can move the guns around. And yeah, you can like, switch yeah. them into modes. Yeah, yeah. that was okay. Yeah. I, mean, I like that changing neat, formation. But, it, but, but again, it wasn't because I was trying to shoot the small enemies. It was that I was trying to shoot the big, you know, the yeah. bomb. Yeah. <laughs> And then that takes out the whole screen, yeah. and it's like, well, well once I don't, you clear I don't that have to part care about out, yeah. Else. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it looked good. It just if if you're new to the Xbox, try that game out. <laughs> try that game out. <laughs> and thanks for listening to our podcast. Yeah, thanks for showing up on the show. <laughs> and but... if you don't want to pay uh, nine dollars <laughs> for them to have turned like a, a Galaga into a twin stick shooter, you can probably find the old one for like a dollar or two somewhere. <laughs> I'm yeah. guessing. Do they have that on the arcade? Yeah, game room? I'm sure, right? Oh, I don't even Not know. Not game room, they wouldn't. I think oh, they okay. have the other one in game room. Oh, they might. Not yeah, they Galaga, might have Galaga, in, Not Galaga in arcade. But the other one. But I don't, I don't know even if it would be a dollar. Let's yeah. talk about more stuff we don't know. All right. <laughs> It's not our whole show. Yes. It's not our shtick. Yes. <laughs> Nailed it. That's what I'm changing our iTunes description to. Awesome. Well, then, uh, shall we move on to Half Minute Hero Super Mega Neo Climax? Half Minute Hero Super Mega Neo Climax. They should team up with Techno Kitten Adventure just for naming. Things. They should. Oh. Naming conventions. They're, <laughs> they're owning it. They should have, like, a panel at a convention. So I never played this. Games shouldn't move this fast, in my opinion. I never but, played uh, this on the PSP, which I think is, it was PSP. PSP, PSP, PSP. Okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think this would be awesome on a PSP. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, um, I agree. I checked out the demo, and I played a little bit of it. I didn't play a ton of it because I liked it. Yeah. And I kind of feel that I'm going to come back and buy it some t- at some point. Yeah. But it's not right now. Yeah. I mean, I, there were things I liked about it, but it didn't really, really hook me. The, I don't know. The idea of playing a, an RPG game like that in a puzzle format almost, I mean, because it almost became it's, a puzzle. It's almost a puzzle. It. I, this is the way I was thinking about it. Um, it's got elements almost of resource management because you basically have to manage yeah. three resources between your health, your money, yeah. and your time mm-hmm. and sort of balance those, you know, keeping those well. And then um, WarioWare. <laughs> all, all I could think of was, was just weird was WarioWare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I mean that's what it feels like. It feels like a mini game. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. And a kind of passive one too. I mean, yeah. cuz you don't you don't do much other than direct right, your character. Because you don't attack, everything's automatic. Right. You just direct your character around and then run into towns and buy things. Um, and stall time. Right, exactly. <laughs> By buying time. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it becomes I mean that's where the puzzler became too where it's like m- learning it's almost like you need to redo a lot of areas i see that you probably have to redo a lot of areas multiple times too because you have to do these other parts Mm -hmm. and then you can basically restart um or and reset your time Mm -hmm. so it's like but every time you reset your time the the price goes up to do that right uh so you're also leveling up through all these times by having encounters with enemies which you have to get to a certain level before you can fight the boss so it almost becomes like finding the perfect path Mm -hmm. as far as like okay i'll go do this first now i can get enough time to go over to here now i need to spend this, that's why I see exactly it as resource management. Yeah, that know? too. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. which isn't good for. That's not something. <laughs> Sean, Sean's yeah. brain nothing, already hurts. Yeah, my it, right from the get go, this uh, uh, game, I didn't know what I was doing, and <laughs> you know, not attacking anybody. I was still button smashing, even though I didn't really even have to do it. I just was like, Whoa. <laughs> you're just pushing buttons. I'm like, ah, fighting these guys, I win. You know, and then I was like, I'm pushing buttons. <laughs> but then I realized one time I didn't even have to. I don't. It's. I think it's a little bit too fast paced for me. Yeah. I. I I don't like to be hurried in those ways, and this is not the type of game where I'm like, oh, especially when the timer goes up and music yeah. goes. Yeah, it's not good. Like for I said, me. You, you have to look at it as a puzzler, or you know, Craig said too, Love the, the resource look, management, and yeah. they, they work together. Yeah, you yeah. Know, as far as 
you know, because you can run to be quicker, but then your health goes down. Right, exactly. Which is awesome. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's all that management of, right. well, you can do this or that. It's all, sometimes it almost feels like a quick time event, like you're trying to run past this village and you have to hit the button <laughs> just right. Otherwise, you're going to run right past it and you're yeah. going to have to turn around and that's going to waste your time. I had a lot of problems with that where I'd get to a village and then I would be like, not, I'd stand, be standing by it and I'd go hit the button and then it would move me. So I wasn't by it. So I was just sitting there hitting A, like, I want to get in. And it's like, I'm like, ah. And then that just upsets me even more. But I'm going to die. And then you could buy time, which I thought was really neat about the game. Like, I was automatically like, how is this game even going to work? You know, I always wanted to say no to making the pact with the time goddess. Because it offers yes, no. That was the best part. Did you do that? Yeah. And they they were like, he's like, if you answer no in any RPG game, it doesn't do anything. It ends the game. So we are got to answer yes. And then so you had to answer yes. And I love the style. I mean, it's turning into yes, yes. <laughs> no, choice. but that, that would, would have been awesome. the best. Yeah. I mean, I do find it very funny and witty, yeah. too, in those areas. Yeah. And so it's I really like the idea. It's very tongue-in-cheek, yep. and it's Agreed. fun. Uh, and so I really like, and it's cute. Like, mm-hmm. I like the old-style look to it, but I really like that new style updated, too. The, right. Because I, I played in both of the versions that you can play in. And Yeah, I, I like the old style more. but Yeah, I liked it, too. Yeah. But I like the new one too. Anyway, uh, cute. <laughs> one thing that cute. did did kind of frustrate me because I tried yes. to go back and replay levels, and it's the equipment management. So you know, um, if you try to just go in, you can't bring higher level equipment into older levels. Oh. Like you can only use equipment that you start the level with, um, and so. Like if you go back to the very first level, you have to basically strip yourself of everything. Mm. And if you, uh, but that that one, let's not use that as an example. Let's say like a couple levels through, where you've gotten a cut, you know, a little better sword, maybe a shield or something like that, but not the best stuff that you have. Mm-hmm. And uh, so then, if you try to just go straight in and start the game, then it'll say, oh, well, you're gonna, you know, you can't bring all of your equipment in. Do you just want to go in as is? And if you hit yes, then you go in with nothing on. <laughs> like like it'll just take it off. Like mm. it won't, it won't downgrade it to the appropriate one. Yeah, and so you got to go into the equipment and you know adjust that. It's it's not not a huge thing in overall, but it's well, you know yeah. it, it doesn't. It's a determinant for wanting to replay exactly right. stuff. I would think just because it's tedious. Exactly. I mean, I can understand them not wanting you to bring in higher power weapons into mm-hmm. older levels because then you would just blitz through the thirty second stuff pretty easily but there should be an automation to that yeah of like it knowing to like put you down to some level yeah i mean it's it's like it's not like it can't know what you had the previous level (laughs) right i mean well maybe i don't know maybe i get i guess maybe there are branching paths later in the game or something like that there's it's a you know it's a one-way path yeah uh in the demo but i I guess that's a possibility i don't know i i I really liked it i wanted to have more fun with it but it just didn't really hook me in like i said i think it i i'm it makes me it's like the uh the heroes of might magic whatever it was yeah yeah where i you know heard that it was that That original (laughs) handheld well then i ended up buying it on the ds yeah and that is serves such a better purpose for me playing it on the ds i think that now i've played this Mm -hmm. i'm like oh i really like that on the psp right so i might go look for the psp copy of it now you know and play it on my psp yeah yeah right. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I, I like playing Wario. <laughs> nah, I like playing WarioWare on the DS. I don't know if I would play that on the Wii though so much. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we played that one oh, on the Wii. Yeah, we did, and it was okay. Yeah, it was all right. But it, it, it's it's a different sensation. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, I was also grabbing you cr- your crotch a lot. <laughs> oh, that's that's why the sensation was familiar. <laughs> oh Lord, crotch. <laughs> I don't know. Where Lord I crotch. Is Lord, that, is Lord that crotch. A, Lord, is that a comic book character? Lord, crotch. you probably fight a Lord crotch. Lord in half crotch. Minute here. <laughs> crotch he, grabber. He's in Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> and we're back. Lord crotch. <laughs> Yeah, that, that cod piece that gave Maybe. gave me a headache. Thirty thirty minute thirty minute half minute hero gave me kind of a headache. You keep trying to up yourself. Thirty minutes. I know. Like we believe. That's it, what Sean. I need. I need thirty minutes. You're a thirty to... second hero. Yeah. <laughs> thirty second zero. <laughs> Whatever. Wah, wah. Uh, the last XBLA game <laughs> I uh, played and I purchased uh, this w- past week it was a uh, Dead Block from Candy Gun Games. Eight hundred Microsoft points and. Um, you know, I've I've seen on online people kind of comparing it to the zombies mode in Call of Duty mm-hmm. because you know you're doing some wall bar- you know window barricading and door barricading, but it, it also has a strong sort of tower defense element. Yeah, I say it seems like that mode with like Team Fortress. Yeah, yeah. characters. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
because that dude only reminds me of the the mechanic guy, right? Or the engineer. You, you can build barricades, but really those are your those are your sort of minimal blockade. The base. Uh, the, the, yeah. the, the better thing is to build traps over the doors and windows, mm -hmm. and then they'll have various effects on the zombies. So basically, it's uh, one thing I really like about it is sort of the idea behind it. It's got this sort of fun, whimsical take on the whole zombie genre. Yeah, and uh, it's set in like it's it's. Set up as like a late night horror show mm -hmm. set in the fifties, where all these zombies are being raised by the power of rock and roll. I'll tell you when I when I started the game, <laughs> love it. When I started the game and they like did that whole intro thing yeah. with the guy on the voiceover, and he's like all over the top. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, this is why Craig bought it. <laughs> Because I knew, I mean, it instantly it was something that was right up your alley. Oh yeah, no, it definitely. Totally it's got your... the Psycho Billy music. Yeah, in there. Exactly. Although I wish they had more than one song. So because <laughs> you hear that song a lot, I could imagine. I hope you like that song. Yeah, it's it's a good song. But yeah. uh, and so yeah, you play the, these. Uh, there are three characters available. Uh, there's uh, Mike. Can't remember his. No, no, Mike Bacon is the the the, the Boy Cub Scout. Scout. Yeah, the Boy Cub, Scout. Yeah. And. Uh, I don't remember Jack. Carl, Carl Foster? Or no, no, Jack Foster. Jack Foster. Jack Foster is the construction guy, and then Foxy Jones is the the police lady Foxy that, you, Jones. that you get later. <laughs> yes, and uh, so you, your your goal is you're always in a building and you're trying to survive long enough to find uh, like <laughs> an amp, a preamp, and a guitar yeah. so that you can finish the game or finish the level by doing a doing basically a rhythm game yeah <laughs> little portion as you rock out and then all the zombies rock because they rock so hard that they just fall apart nice <laughs> and, and so your your goal is to try and stay alive long enough and you know be able to search around all the different rooms uh to find these different pieces um and so you have like i mentioned you you can barricade walls and windows or doors and windows. You can place traps over doors and windows. Uh, there are also sort of environmental factors as well. So, for example, uh, if there's a radiator, you can place a piece of meat on the radiator and then the, the, the zombies will be attracted to the smell of the meat and then they'll electrocute themselves. Nice. Um, yeah. And, and the traps, the traps are a lot of fun because uh, there's a variety of things. The basic one that you start with is the freeze trap, yeah, which is a very useful trap. Yeah, it, you know it freezes them and then you can break them because you because you can also attack. You can attack with the right bumper button. Mm -hmm. And uh, do they defrost from that freeze? They do defrost yeah. after okay. a while. Yes. I wondered why I'd set it up and like there was still some that were getting in the house and that thing was still active. So yeah. they must have just froze and then came in. All, all, you know, all it does is allow you to break them with one hit to okay. kill them with one hit, uh, which is also really good against some of the bigger zombies that you get it. later on. Yeah, <laughs> I could imagine. There's a, there's a variety of zombies. It's it's kind of like uh, plants versus zombies variety nice. there, uh, and and that's pretty nice. But then there are also things like. Um, uh, there's one where that the Boy Scout gets because everyone has their own unique traps, mm -hmm. and uh, the Boy Scout has one where the zombie climbs in the window and then it drops a cardboard box on its head, and the the cardboard box has a picture of the the Boy Scout on the front of it, and so the the zombie that has the box on its head can't really see where it's going and it can't attack you, but then every other zombie thinks that that zombie is the Boy Scout and so nice. they start attacking them instead. <laughs> Uh, and, and so there, there's a lot of fun little things with that. And then each character has their own what they call smart bombs. Basically, they're uh, a room affecting ability. So and they're really nice in tight situations. And then they have a long cool time or a cool down time mm -hmm. until you can use it again. But so, for example, Jack has um, a nail gun that nails all of the zombies in the room to the floor so that they can't move around and they can't attack you i was wondering why he was shooting at the floor i yeah. never i i if, if you look there's like nails sticking out of their feet i shot it like, one rrr, i rrr. shot it one time and then one guy was stuck and i was like what did i do did i do anything <laughs> yeah that, well i was why. thinking i was thinking it was like the harpoon gun from uh uh, uh crackdown yeah. or something like that yeah. i was gonna nail him to the wall but no it nails him to the floor because i'm like why is he shooting in a circle i'm like this is weird <laughs> yeah because all you have to do is just press the x button and he'll just shoot at every zombie that's in the awesome room. cool <laughs> and and uh, Mike's got like this rancid burger that he throws out and then all the zombies are attracted to it. And, you know, they're trying to eat that. And so you can, you know, take them out. Mm -hmm. uh, Foxy has a taser, which uh, shoots out and then electrifies and just instantly kills a bunch of zombies that are all standing together. So, you know, you can use that in dire situations. And yeah, you. OK. Uh, and in order to build the barricades, in order to build the traps, you need parts for yeah. it and yeah. so to build barricades you need pieces of wood and you use you get that by breaking furniture 
um, and to build traps, you need uh, basically metal parts, and you find yeah. that by searching through things. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so yeah, it's a resource management uh, uh, tower defense sort of deal. Um, some of the levels get kind of difficult, um, especially when you have AI partners because you have to make sure the AI is pretty good. Do you are they all? Uh, do you have partners, or do you choose that? Uh, they assign partners. Okay, so like as you play through the game, there are some levels that have multiple people or yes. AI. Okay. Yes. Automatically. Yeah, automatically. Okay. And and you have to go. You have to get to them and talk to them before they join you. Gotcha. And it's a good idea to do that because they can still get attacked by zombies. Now, if anybody dies, you can revive them. Okay. Um, just by running over to this ghost form of them and uh, yeah. you know, holding out a. Uh, but that affects your total, your point total at the end, and it also affects any medals that you're working for through the level. Um, and so it's got a it's got a good replay value. I've already replayed you know the first three levels several times, nice. you know, trying to get better at it, and you know, uh, it's got different difficulty settings, and so that'll affect things like oh, because as you're building things like barricades and uh, traps, you have a small quick time event that you have to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With the barricades, you're trying to press A as it goes across a, back and forth across a bar and, you know, in a particular area. And then mm-hmm. with the traps, you have to hold down a particular button uh, and you'll have to switch back and forth between those on harder levels. Um, and so, but you get more points and you get better medals uh, for playing more difficult settings. But um, yeah, I, I liked it a lot. Uh, you can call, you can, so you have to watch out for the AI. You don't want to leave them alone. They're pretty good, uh, but they will tackle like a large group of zombies on their own sometimes and in so they can die or try to yeah they'll, tr- <laughs> they'll try to but they'll do things like repair barricades nice. you know they'll throw out their smart bombs uh to affect enemies you know they they do actually do help quite a bit and it, and you might think well you know what am i going to do about if they wander off well actually they don't leave the room that they're in and you can call them into any room by holding down the l uh, the left bumper button, mm-hmm. and if you just press the left bumper button, you'll switch between the characters. Yeah. So if you're playing single player, you can oh, you can, you can use them. any of the okay. characters. That, yeah, that's good. Yeah, because like I said, each character has their own unique traps. Um, that's Fo- awesome. Foxy has a bomb trap. <laughs> she just builds this barricade, and there's a nuclear bomb at the top of it. <laughs> and so when they break through the barricade, it explodes. There's nice. a, that one where it's like a they're dropping. Is it a toilet? Yes. The yeah. And there's, then the flies attack them, and the the flies eat. They them. become infected. Yeah. yeah. And then they just. The, but they the, infect the, others too. And then the skulls just drop. Because there's a. Well, and there's also jukeboxes, and if you turn on the jukebox, all the zombies in the room will start to dance yeah. until they fall apart. Nice. Uh, because there's an achievement tied to having ten poop infected zombies dance in a room so nice <laughs> nice that I, I had a lot of fun with the game i love the style i thought it looked great yeah, yeah. Great. have you done any multiplayer with it yet because it I is online not. i mean it, it does have online multiplayer it, right? i don't have any one of my friends list yet and, okay. and i uh, i want to go through the the full thing gotcha. single player before i just go for random people um Word. because i think that would be much easier mm-hmm. to handle because you know you could have people going for specific tasks um, and like I said, the AI is pretty good. They'll search for things out. Oh, but th- this is th- this is an issue um, because wood is shared amongst all the characters, and oh. so and so you co- you know as you collect wood and as people you know rebuild barricades, you know that that supply is shared. But that's okay. That's actually okay. Uh, but the little um, metal nuts that you use to build traps, I think are individual for whoever finds them. Oh. And so, especially if you're not Mike, because each character has their own stats. So uh, uh, Jack is best at breaking things down and Mike is best for searching for things. And Foxy is best at uh, melee attacks. Okay. And, uh, and so when Mike is in a room where there's things to search, that's immediately what he wants to go do. Unless there's like a zombie to smash or something like so that. So he takes everything. Yeah. And so, and so he collects everything, Dick. Um, yeah, which can make it a little that, difficult sometimes. And that totally makes sense. So why, why you didn't have enough well, parts? No, no, like he was like flying all over the place. Oh, yeah. And then I, yeah, he'll, he'll also deal. Like if you build some freeze traps in a room, he'll go smash any frozen zombie. Yeah. The, the AI is quite helpful. Cool. Um, but I remember him like digging around like constantly. Yeah. And then I switched your way sometimes. Yeah. And I switched over to him and then, uh, what Mike Jack, Jack or yeah. Yeah. Jack. He was just crushing stuff. So I was like, this is perfect. Because that's what I hated doing, was breaking stuff down. Yeah. So I'm just like, ugh. There's a bit of button mashing in certain parts of the game. But 
It's it been re- a lot of fun. It reminded me of there was a game for PS2 back in the day. And it's funny that it, it's just more of the style, like the look, the animation. Mm-hmm. It was called State of Emergency. Ugh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I'd hate I don't know. Rockstar Games, yo. Yeah, but it had that same, like... I remember everyone was excited about it. Because <laughs> Rockstar, yes. yeah. they could never fail. <laughs> but just the look, <laughs> like the way the animation is, it reminded me. I yeah, had fun yeah, with no, that I game. Remember that. I liked State, State of, of Emergency. Emergency. Of course you did. I did. I know you did. Running around the mall, just... Where you can have it. It was an awesome game. Did I tell you, awesome, Sean, awesome. in Loot Fest, you can customize your character? Oh, man. <laughs> you can change oh, his man. hat, even. Oh, man. Oh, Eight, man. Was 800 points? Is it a $10 game? Yes, 10, yep. Yeah, 10. That's good, too. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think it was definitely worth that price. I think there are 10 full levels, um, so that's about a buck per level. Yeah. <laughs> that's I, not bad. The, 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 the style, the anime, it, it just looked really cool. It was yeah. fun that I played with it. And not not like the MB, MLB bobbleheads game, but <laughs> was that no good? I didn't check that out. <laughs> and neither did I. I was hoping for like a baseball arcade. This is really quick, but yeah. I was hoping for like a baseball arcade game, like, like yeah. Madden arcade. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, this is like a baseball game with bobblehead players. <laughs> yeah, I, I I played like one inning. Yeah, to be fair, it is in the name. <laughs> I mean, they do kind of tell you MLB bobbleheads. I understand that. That kind of says everything that is. I guess it, if it would have said bobbleheads, he was reading arcade. more into it. <laughs> he was. He wanted more. I was wanting not a like a full fledged baseball game. Kept throwing a friggin' home plate. <laughs> anyway, but what about trench? You picked that up, right? I did. I did pick trench up. And I haven't gotten that yet either. Music. Absolutely, absolutely. I suck. I, you, you know, I second everything Craig said, and I third it because um, <laughs> it, it's it's a fantastic game. I, I just I've had a lot of fun with it. Once I got past that demo level, yeah. Um, not that the demo level was bad, no, but it's but very it, it's very handholdy. Yeah, it is, and it really opens up, and it was just yeah. like oh yeah, and it that's where the fun begins. Yeah, and one thing I liked about it was that the the whole squinting thing that that happens, and you know, if you hit the button and squint your eyes, you can see. F- like it takes you, and it's like it's a real crazy, especially when all the craziness is happening, and mm-hmm. you go to that first person, or I call it first person, yeah, but no, really yeah. it's it's your, the zoom, yeah, the zoom. You're right over his shoulder, but you're in the trench. The action is just so like it, it's cooler. Yeah. Like they do a thing like with the graphics and just the animation that just makes it feel like you're now in the mix instead mm-hmm. of being over top watching it, right. which I thought was a great touch to the game. Uh, not to mention just. Everything about those those trenches and all the ads and <laughs> colors and hats and gas masks. I've got masks a solid and, gold one now. Oh, man, there's and it's sweet and I, I I I dig. You know, the story's been really fun. I've gotten to, I've gotten to uh, through the first what Europe and I'm out oh, okay, to the, um, yeah. What is it? The first theater. Yeah. Yeah, So you're in Africa now? Yeah, I'm in Africa now. And there's some, it gets like, you really, some of those, you're playing through single player, right? Yeah. Yeah. I I imagine it could get pretty hectic. You've got to kind of learn what the the level's all about. And then you have to go back and build your trench up to that. Yeah. And and I like that. I, I, it's kind of, you know, it's got that tower defense feel, but I really like learning from it instead Mm -hmm. of going, I've got to pay attention to this. No, I don't need that. I need to, you know, have a bigger gun. Right. And not have, sometimes. The bigger gun is the answer, <laughs> which I think is really cool. Like at first, it kind of and, and I also like it because I got upset with that. I'm like, God, why? You know, I hate the fact that I might not know what I'm going to deal with. But it also kind of gives you little hints and says, Hey, you're going to need. Oh yeah, you're yeah. going to need these legs, and then you're going to need a long range gun. Yeah, I mm-hmm. thought that was fantastic. Yeah, that's too. a really good, cool uh, part of the part game. Of it, yeah, but I absolutely, I yeah, I'm, I dig it. You need Worth to get the yourself a Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was, it's really cool. He needs to get himself what? A regiment. A regiment. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a long time for those regiment uh, rewards. Otherwise, <laughs> and I got a shirt. I need to buy. I got an Avatar Award T-shirt. <laughs> That's what almost Deadblock almost got me when they showed the me hat. I could get a hard hat. I'm like, I'm telling you, uh, all those people that make these games, that's all I got to do. <laughs> for shot. <laughs> Throw in an Avatar Award and then be like, oh my god, in, in, in the demo. Yeah, in, exactly. In the demo. <laughs> yeah, in the demo. In the demo. How many points do I have? <laughs> it's oh, very smart. I'm it. telling you. <laughs> I didn't need a hard hat, though. <laughs> Predatory is what it is. Yeah, I guess. But you're the prey, <laughs> so it works. <laughs> um, how about some Captain America pinball? Pinball, pinball FX2. <laughs> right. What? No, nothing. It's awesome. I know it's awesome. <laughs> Do you? Do you know? I, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. I know you're going to say it's awesome. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> but it's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> uh, I... It's really, really, really well done. Good. Um, 
you know, I love all the Marvel tables, mm-hmm. most of the Marvel tables. Uh, Spider Man is still my How favorite. How Ryan Reynolds is it? <laughs> it's not Ryan Reynolds at all. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the case. I don't know why it's that even crazy. factor in. It's not Chris Evans either. Chris Evans, that's what I meant. Sorry. <laughs> They're either all the same. Way. <laughs> they kind of are. They in are my in my head. head. <laughs> exactly. You guys need to shut up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know you love Green Lantern. Uh, <laughs> what? Um, still haven't anyway, seen so that one. Captain America, the pinball table, <laughs> really, really tight. It's yeah. really, really well done. I like it a and lot. Spider Man was my favorite, and I held even after I played this a little while that Spider Man was still my favorite. But it might be <laughs> surpassing because it is just really smartly it's made. All the competition for you. It might be. <laughs> I, I think it's great. Yeah, I, I think I, this is again it, it, when I always talk about the pinball tables, and I want a pinball table and not a crazy pinball table. Mm-hmm. This one has it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it has everything, and it, I feel very comfortable with the with the table, and I, I like that about it. I don't get a lot of those, you know, where, the, where you hit the ball and it flies back at you. Really I was going to say, there's really not any cheapness to this table yeah. as mm-hmm. far as like you know, you hit a certain spot and it goes right down the middle, yep. or it's really easy to get the kickbacks on the sides. Uh, for the most part. And it's kind of hard for the balls to go down them that I've noticed. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't happen very often. So by the time it does, usually you have your kickbacks build back up. Yeah. Uh, the modes that are in the game are pretty easy to activate. I mean, it's everything's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Because uh, Red Skull and Baron Zemo are there, like, trying to screw you up. <laughs> And fight Take over yet. the world, Barry and you have to have Zemo. a fist fight with Red Skull. Yeah, and so you have to hit this one area, and you punch him every time. But it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but that's the thing is, like, they do the pow and the wham, and then yeah, uh, well, the, the other, gunshots. Uh, the yep. sound design on this table the is amazingly done fantastic. because the one of the bumpers or a couple of the bumpers there are these gunshots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're very awesome sounding. Like they got the whole like sound like the the drawn out like mm-hmm. echo of the sound too it, it just does it perfectly it's nice. awesome uh they also have the cosmic cube in the table which whoever's idea it was to put the cosmic cube in as a playable element of the table and work like it does is a genius <laughs> it's very cool <laughs> because it's right in the middle by captain and you'll hit these a couple different things to activate it I see you're on a first name basis with, with cap that. yeah <laughs> uh <laughs> and it'll lower it down and when you hit the cosmic cube it gives you a bonus point, like a 1.2 million or something score, but it also teleports the ball mm-hmm. to whatever point you need it at. So oh. if you're in the middle of a mission, it's going to take you to wherever that mission would need That's to be cool. completed. Um, it always works towards your goals, which fits in thematically with the Cosmic Cube, mm-hmm. which is awesome. So like having that added in is just really, really well done. And it's also, I mean, there's an element of strategy at that point on this yeah. table, where now it's like I get that Cosmic Cube ready, before I start like one of the modes, because then it gives me a little extra yeah. boost when I'm doing the mode. That's cool. And so when you're adding in strategy to like the pinball table, I think that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's a really smart thing to do. So I don't know whose idea it was, but you're a genius. It's an awesome table. <laughs> you're a hero. It was me. <laughs> and you know what? They finally, and I don't know how many other tables do this that maybe I haven't been paying attention, but there are almost everything in this, in this table carries through. So if you are halfway through activating something or if you've built up something else, yeah, I noticed you that. lose your ball, that stuff is still there. That stuff is still active. Oh. It's not like you have to rebuild on that. Right. It is that's what every table needs to do because there's, you know, a reward for like progress at that point sure. and not just everything, you know, clinging to one. Although, you know, I like that maybe this is the table that does that and some of the others don't. You know, right. there's there I could be the variety that variety that helps. Yeah. But Cause, also the, cause the other way is more arcadey in, in that you have to push through and succeed yeah. in one go. And they give you credit, partial credit for partially completing challenges. If you're in the middle of a challenge and, and lose your ball, you get like, a, you know, instead of getting yeah. 12 million, you'll get like eight. Yeah. And oh, cool. most of the other tables don't do that. Yeah. And they certainly don't track your progress of that mode. So the next time you activate it, you only have to do that part of it again. And so it's just really tight and well done. And I think it's really accessible for everybody. I I loved it. Three dollars, yeah, two hundred forty points. I thought it was the just the way it's set up and just the, even the table itself, just the way it's designed and the way it looks. Finding all the commandos. Oh, it's just it's so cool. <laughs> and what do you do when Bucky happens? Because I've been trying to light up Bucky and I lost two balls trying to light up Bucky and then you, nothing happened. To to get Bucky. Well, you have to hit the little thing at the beginning, the bonus. Yeah, and then you got to get it up the ramp and then you activate Bucky. I know, but he's. He lights up on all the, the, the exits. His name's in there. And I tried to light his name up. Oh, that's the kickbacks. Yeah. I that's what get... activates the kickbacks. Yeah, but You know, you should read the rule sheet. I don't like that <laughs> stuff. But it helps so much. Yeah. 
Read Maybe them I'll... a little bit at a time. So now go in and look at just that one. I think and I've fallen next... into a parallel dimension here. The next time, I know. The next time you, uh... <laughs> this is a weird place. But you can do one at a time. So you look up that first. And then now next time you do a mission, you're like, oh, what do I need for this mission? And you just look at them one at a time. And then before you know it, you know everything. Sweet. Like me. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then uh, Pinball FX, they announced this Miss Explosion Man table. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <gasps> That I've been talking about for six months because I'm a genius. <laughs> did you just do an I called it? <clears throat> I did. I did call that shit. I've been doing. No, but did you just declare that you called it? I've been declaring that I called it for four fucking months. <laughs> so I'm going to say it now for sure. Now that it's official. I called that shit. I. But we want we want a whole Twisted Pixel. I'm not going to validate I would, that. We, I, I do we, want a full Twisted yeah. Pixel library. There should be an <laughs> asterisk next to you. I called it. I will say this. You probably not find a prouder atheist than me. <laughs> But I prayed like a some bitch for this table to get made, and it apparently worked. I want a maw table, <laughs> and just a purple maw ball. Would just eat, eat all your balls. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> My favorite kind of game. That was pre-show. Wasn't Come on, it? good old Captain Come America. On. I held off the entire <laughs> Captain I know America you did. table discussion when I was talking about draining balls, dicks. <laughs> I didn't say draining balls either. Or draining no. dicks, for that matter. <laughs> Wait, what? Um, Yikes. Uh, well, Trish you're welcome, Zen. <laughs> hope, hope you appreciated us talking about the game. It's like a good good talk, good talk, we're good just, talk. We're oh. just ensuring that that will never get preview table. That's correct. <laughs> Doing what I can to help out. So that you can give them money, because they need the money. They do need, well, I don't know if they need the well, money. Well, you, you know, they deserve the money. They do deserve the money. <laughs> I've bought a bunch of tables from them. Mm. Which is why I continue to not buy their stuff. I know why. I don't know. You really should. I don't know. You should look at that that Captain America one because I avoid these pyramids. This is like a pyramid scheme here. As you see, but it it's is not. Oh, it is. You get. Right. You got to keep buying more tables. It's fucking brilliant. That's <laughs> what it is. Well, as long as but they... the leaderboards challenge, like the leaderboard oh, stuff between our friends list, is so fun. Yeah, no, it it, do, it does sound like a lot. Some of fun. jackass, and I and I won't name him because <laughs> it would only give him pleasure. <laughs> Sent me three messages last night to let me know he beat my score in Captain America. Three of the same messages just kept spamming. Obviously, send me a message. <laughs> until, me. until you reply. So it was three. No, I'm not going to reply. The only reply he's going to get is when he looks in next time and my score is higher. Or than listens his. right to the show. Well, it, I don't care. It should, be, it should be higher by then. It better be higher by then. Whatever. Yeah. You got, you got homework to do. He shall. He remain nameless. <laughs> Are we done with XPLA now? <laughs> yes. All right. So I got I got a demo. You got a demo? What you got? I got for a demo? demo. What? I went what back in out? time with Sonic Generations. Oh, that's right. That was like last episode. I know, but I but wanted none of us played it. But none of us played it and I wanted to try it and it looked great, but it was Sonic and there it is. That was your total Ding. talk. It just it, it felt like it the first Wong. I played you <laughs> yeah. There's like a two day limit. Like that's what I don't understand about this demo. It says this demo will last for two more days. Okay. They only let you play the first level. And then it's And I'm saying level level one, not level one point one, point two. Act I'm one. just saying act one. Zone so, one. So why act have one? both? Huh? So why have both, like the level restrictions and the I, I, the self detonating? Yeah, that's what I didn't. Under, I did not understand. Like maybe they think there's <laughs> enough people out there who is like, for three, you know, this one level <laughs> is enough for me. I am going to play this level <laughs> for over three days, and over and over. No, no, that's why the oh, yeah, that's, that's what the, the daytime right. around yep. there. You know, for the rest of eternity. Now you're thinking. I'd play it for four. <laughs> Damn demo. <laughs> But no, it's, it's what is it? what it's, is it? Because I haven't been paying attention. It's just uh, are they redoing? It, it looked like a new. Or is it, it new? It, it was new. Uh, just it's cleaner look. Okay. It's just you know. It's not. Uh, like I guess a repackaging it, of the old games. It's a new. Uh -uh. It's new to problem. me. Yeah. And then I but think still plays as Sonic. Yep. Okay. Same same way. Uh, had you know you can do well. They added in some of the old. Not yeah, the yeah. you know yeah. you could do the the sit and spin thing. Um, <laughs> You can do this. <laughs> I had to do that. To sit and, I don't know what to call it. The I'm swirl. Sure, I think there's a I'm theme for this I'm episode. I'm sure you sit and spin quite often while playing. <laughs> there is a theme for this episode. I'm gonna, the, the, Isn't this the theme for every episode? The listeners at home, on. the careful ones, could pick out what that theme is. <laughs> but uh, and it's got a 3D option to it, too, game. for 3D TVs, <laughs> which would totally screw. I think I, I, I would I'd not be able to play a Sonic game. So why do you want a 3D? I'd be ducking. Isn't it too... 
This isn't a side scrolling. Yeah, it's side scrolling. So that's what would... side scrolling 3D. And I'd be trying. We well, to... could have depth, you know, in the background. That uh, or... would fuck me up. Yeah, exactly. me too. Like, like all those coins go flying, and I'd be reaching yeah. for them off the ground and stuff. <laughs> well, then I just question your intelligence. <laughs> I know exactly. I was just kidding. What? Um, well, he's taking your play games on acid advice. It's your fault. <laughs> it's true. You all right? He learned it by watching you. It's true. Oh, most but yeah. people do. That's that's the demo I played. <laughs> well, Congratulations! Right. Enjoy it for the next day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm, good. I'm glad. I, I'm glad. Had, I, I downloaded it a long time ago. I'm glad I didn't play it until like a lot this you had week. No more Shadows of the Dam from last episode. None. What? Seriously? You didn't go through and play it and finish I it? I did not. Good. I will send you that video of the one I wanted you to watch. Then. Okay. <laughs> the, I'll, the I'll be waiting because it's funny. I'll be waiting. Since now you don't care. Patiently. Can't believe you missed the pooping horse. Pooping horse. <laughs> And then the guy eats his own heart. <laughs> that's still just a plug for those who haven't played it yet. That's, to go that's out and play really it. just an emo metaphor. <laughs> it really is. The whole game is an emo metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> they play some My Chemical Romance over in the- <laughs> Yes. Uh, I played some Fear 3. I played some Fear 3, uh, which I didn't play a lot of it. I've only played a couple of the levels. Yeah. Uh, it got a little bit delayed. I don't know if you heard or not, but I had some problems getting motivated mm-hmm. uh, to play some games. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, so I've only played a couple of levels. I know you can play as multiple characters in the game. It it does have a co-op setting, so you can go through both at the same time. Oh, cool. But after you clear a level, it's playing as the main dude, which I'm not too steeped in the fear lore, so I don't really even know what's going on story-wise either. It's a little convoluted and I'm messy guessing it's to scary. me. It's supposed to be scary, I believe. <laughs> actually, I I heard this, actually, I heard this one up. had less <clears throat> of the horror element. That could be, too. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I seem to remember playing Fear, the first one, and there was a lot more of the, like, quick edit, like, you know, the girls yeah. showing up and things like that. And there's been a couple of those, but it hasn't been much. Yeah, I think I read somewhere that this one's a little more shooter-focused. It is very shooter-heavy. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's it's you know, very cover-heavy. So mm-hmm. the cover system is really well done. I'm Ooh. enjoying that shooter aspect of it. It's really dark. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know... It, that's highlighted by the fact that you do have a flashlight on the end of your gun that you have to turn on a lot of times because you are in pitch black almost. Sure. Yeah. So there, it adds that horror aspect to it, you know. Uh, so it's Vin Diesel there. Sorry. Yes. Vin Diesel is there. <laughs> when you're in pitch black. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so friggin' Vin. He should come back on the show. Why you always got to bring us down with Vin Diesel? <laughs> yeah. He's a showstopper. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you can't top Vin Diesel. You can't. It's it's my it's my uh bid to uh win the, the joke war here, I think. You won. You are the winner. Um no, but it is very I find it dark. I did you know, we've talked before that my TV I have to brighten it up quite a bit. Yeah. This one I had to do more so than normal. Hmm. Uh it is really dark in some areas. And the AI is a little weird. Sometimes I've walked up on guys and they've seen me instantly and turned around. Sometimes I've walked up and they like look at me. I'll like peek out from from cover <laughs> and they'll like hunch down like they see me and they're like, there's something there. And I'm like literally like five feet away from them <laughs> and they don't see me. Uh, and then sometimes they rush up on you, which is those, weird. Those too. enemies have glaucoma. So. <laughs> they might. Uh, but, you know, sometimes, they'll, you know, in a game like that, too, where the AI would normally take cover, they rush up on you mm-hmm. and like come in from both sides and like come around your cover and just start like shooting you in the face nonstop. And so it's they're very aggressive, too. Weird. So I got to the point where I was trying to cover and kind of play that route, but it didn't work so well. So I just started getting aggressive and shooting everybody. There you go. You know, because you do heal back and, and you have this time slow down power that you can use, which I always forget about. And so I never <laughs> use it because I'm stupid. Burr, burr, burr. Uh, but I mentioned before that there are you after you play through a level, you play as the main guy. And then you can replay those levels as his brother, I believe. Uh, they're they're linked somehow. I think they're brothers, but you've killed him. I don't remember how the story's mm-hmm. all going. Uh, Wait, you killed him and you can play as him? Correct. I, he's like a spirit form oh, okay. thing going on Ooh, where he can God. possess people. I don't know the lore. That's what I'm telling you. I don't understand what's happening. You didn't read the instruction manual. I didn't read the instruction <laughs> books. The floor? None of it. Uh, lower floor. So you can go back <laughs> nice. and play the levels as him. That's all I got. And he's less shootery. <laughs> no and more, he's less shootery. Shootery. I made that a word, by the way. Uh, I'm and, pretty sure this has been used before. And more on this show <laughs> of like he does abilities and things like that, where he like can possess people, and uh-huh. so then you take over those guys and like screw up the battlefield and like let him run out and do stuff. And I don't know. It's 
it's a pretty straightforward shooter thus far um, until I probably go back and play those other levels yeah. as the other character. And I think that's where the change up is going to be dad. quite a bit. Exactly. As Ghost, Ghost Dad. It is, no, it's Ghost Dad. It's um, Bill, Bill Cosby, Cosby <laughs> that I'm playing as. <laughs> I wish I could do a Bill Cosby impression. <laughs> I, was, I, I was almost well, about the, to try. Those are the hits. Well, so was I, but then I'm like, this is on... I'm going to shoot these guys. <laughs> this is on the record. We're all just going to sound extremely racist. Oh, I just thought... It's not racist. I'm trying to do an impression of him. The impression I do of Bill Cosby will come out racist. <laughs> <laughs> I know my own limitations. I don't want to give any false impressions of I was how I am to do as a they Cosby do a, show. They era. should do a Ghost Dad Bill video Cosby. game where you pick Ghost. up, you have to find like general pudding pops yeah, or hidden it's items. A, it's about time that... that, that hidden that, pudding pops... <laughs> Putting. It's about time that that uh, uh, market came back. Yeah, the Ghost Dad market. That was Ghost like... Dad market. <laughs> there was never a Ghost Dad market. Get some action figures going. Maybe a Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, that is the mistake. There was never a Ghost Dad market. Well, I'm saying there can be now. Fat See? Albert Ghost Dad. It was just <laughs> your. Wait a minute. Fat ghost. Your your argument was that Ghost Dad was ahead of its time. Yes. Okay. Now I'm in. <laughs> ghost Dad was a, a trailblazer. So fear in three. the spiritual father <laughs> family movie in the like family drama exactly. comedy that was movies. the weirdest yeah. movie. Dramedy. Dramedy. Right. And then Ghost ripped it off. <laughs> I think Ghost was first, and then Ghost Dad. Ahead of its time ripping it off. <laughs> this is the worst. I ever. don't know. I don't have the internet movie database. Or is it the best? <laughs> so, uh, uh, you decide. There's also multiplayer. There's also multiplayer, which I haven't gotten into, and I think that that's, you know, obviously a huge draw, because I don't think the single player is too long. Hmm. The uh, intervals that you play, that they call them, instead of levels, mm -hmm. uh, I think is what they're termed as. There's like eight of them, and I'm, I'm through like a couple of them, so I don't think that there's too much gameplay there. Probably, I would say, if they run on what they are now, it's probably about a seven, eight hour experience, but I guess you can play it as two different people, so well, actually, that's doubled. Actually, intervals four and five are three hours apiece. You don't know nothing. <laughs> With no save points. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it out because I at least want to check out the other side of it and see yeah. how that plays because I think that's where the variety will come in. Um, and, and it'd be can... interesting. I don't know if anybody out there has else has it, but I, maybe do some co-op. That'd be fun, too. Cool. Hmm. As they're both going oh, yeah, at no, the same time. Yeah, I know, I know awesome. there's some folks on my friends list who have been playing it. Yeah, but are they people I want to play with? I don't know. <laughs> You, know, you don't want to play with anybody. You know so some shady the characters. The answer to that is always no. You're friends with there some shady go. folk. <laughs> uh, friends so, with Ghost Dad. How about <laughs> who isn't? <laughs> Transformers: Dark of the Moon. Yes, or as I like to call it, Transformers: War on Cyber War for Cybertron Light. Because it's got same great taste and gutted, but but half the filling. Exactly. So, I don't. I don't know. That's if I would totally say, right on. I don't know if I would say gutted necessarily. Uh, yeah. So I mean, it's a lot of fun if you've uh, had fun playing War for Cybertron because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, it's being done by High Moon Studios, and they've ported pretty much almost all the gameplay for it. Uh, yeah. I don't think you could go to a full vehicle mode in. War for Cybertron, is that Well, right? the, the vehicle was already floating. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Because here you have three modes. You have robot mode, you have stealth mode, and stealth mode was the vehicle mode from War for Cybertron, Essentially, right? yeah. yeah. And then you have a full vehicle mode, which you know goes much faster. Because on, on Cybertron, they had the cool vehicles, which had the guns ported, and everything was on top, and right. they didn't have to hide stuff. Right, because yeah. they were alien cars. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but now you have to have them be like the big what, GMC truck. You know, something just dawned on me. What were they disguising themselves as in... <laughs> On Cybertron. They just transformed to get, move faster. <laughs> yeah, that was always my thing when it, we were talking about it. I was like, what are they trying to be? It, they, it but it was just that they went into like their ship yeah, forms. No, I'm, 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 it's just I'm being facetious here. Come on, guys. Transformers are awesome. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> didn't mean to uh, talk bad about Transformers, which yeah. I didn't think we were. So, I know. I'm just kidding. Yeah, so... Why you gotta cry? It, it, I'm a crier. <laughs> it's, a set, it's essentially, you know, War for Cybertron, but with the, the skin of the movie movie yeah, franchise yeah. and why the hell does bumblebee not talk he just doesn't that doesn't make any sense or i don't know why they they <laughs> have just always he got hurt in the first one so he couldn't talk oh so you do know why yeah but then they fixed him at the end of it and then and by the second he couldn't he couldn't talk again oh could he like say words he, at some point he were he was this, able, this is important we need to get yeah, to the bottom of this ratchet was able to fix his vocals at and the you're end the only one of the, the first, seen the shitty movie so shut up 
<laughs> wow. I'm, a, I'm daggers. I, I'm just kidding. No, you're not, not, not really. Um, I'm not. So you better not be. I know. Um, but no, Ratchet was able to fix them, and then by the second one, they just didn't fix them again. Was the second I, one the one where the little animal, the little animal, the one that was like a dog form, the robot was humping that girl's leg? Was that that one? Wheelie. Was that it? Yeah. Wheelie was humping that chick's leg. Megan Fox. <laughs> yeah, just to, just to make sure. There was no leg was humping in the third one. Because that's pretty much all I've seen from the second one. Or Megan Fox. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot There's a lot more to that movie in the second one than, than, just the than, than, than a robot humping a person's <laughs> leg. They're, Amazing. There that's is the only a, part I've seen, and that seemed like it was pretty much wrapped up everything about right. the movie to me. No, that was just that was just a robot hump and Megan. Look what you started. You started this with Bumblebee. I'm just yeah. saying. But that's why Bumblebee. That's a simple question. He couldn't talk. But he there got, are no simple answers. He got hurt. Not with you around. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah. Gotcha. Vin Diesel. <laughs> and he still can't talk. Okay, so we know he can't talk. Yes. But uh, and so similar to, <laughs> similar to War for Cybertron, each level. Uh, you play as a different Transformer, and, yeah. and that's always a very nice feature uh, and, you to know, give a lot of variety. I, I like the globe trotting aspect too. Yep. Yeah, and I did like that they mix it up with the good bad side again. Yes. Yep. you know it was a little more overt as far as like it just happened naturally, and you didn't Optimus play gets one the side. Shaft, though he uh, totally does, <laughs> but Megatron is a badass <laughs> yes. when you get to play him. Megatron is a yeah. badass, but yeah, I mean he destroys everybody instantly. <laughs> the real in that Megatron, game. yeah, the you one know, that I, lives by my house. I will say that <laughs> it's a semi part. There, John. <laughs> it doesn't matter how dirty it is. That doesn't Shattered mean it's my a dream. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's a Decepticon. You were it totally, looks like Megatron. <laughs> we had this debate on our forums last year, I believe. Whether about... Megatron was living next to John's house. <laughs> Not that debate. I don't remember that one. <laughs> the debate on this game uh, being a movie tie-in and, oh, yeah, and how yeah, that yeah. was going to end up being. Right. And I still stand by the fact that I am super glad that High Moon did this. Yeah. Yeah. Because if anybody else would have done it, it would have been a shitty it game was, like all the other old Transformer fun. games. Yeah. Well, the, the, the two the two previous movie Transformer games were terrible. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they were terrible. Yeah. And it was just, it was War of Cy Cybertron really needed to be done. And everybody enjoyed it. And then they're like, well, we can do it. And for, and for what I understand, they're still making a War for Cybertron exactly. sequel. Exactly. And so I really get the impression that Paramount was like, huh. You guys made a Transformers game that people didn't rip apart. You got some spare time to put oh, one yeah. together for us. And, and they're now, like, okay. And we'll they just... put this out and the reception has been, it's a movie tying game, but at least it plays well. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's, it's a quick. mediocre game. It's quick. It's got very easy and few achievements. And, and those guys yeah. got paid a lot of money for it, probably. So I, good for I them. So. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> if that puts any money toward their next game, then I'm good for it. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, it was very short. That is the, that the is credits the, were, the credits were even short. <laughs> Everything was short right. about it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. it was, I mean, I it, played it in one day. Yeah. that I was completely done with it. And I didn't get into the... I know you played some multiplayer. We I did can play talk some about multiplayer, that. yeah. But, uh, you know, I played the single-player experience and I was done. And, you know, and that's one of the things that was missing, too, is now there's no co-op of any sort. Right. That stuff is all stripped out of the it game. Does, it is it, a single-player experience outside of the regular multiplayer. Achievement-wise, it does have some replayability. True. Um, with the high scores and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to keep the multiplier going and a few challenges to do in, in each particular level and looking for, you know, the Transformer symbols, all yeah. of that stuff. It did feel a little emptier to me than, yeah. than the last game, like you said before, I, where it's just I like agree. you're on rails almost and just going, you know, forward yeah. and you're funneled along this area. And the other one, I kind of felt like I had more range, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, and, you know, you had the even option. Though we didn't, you didn't have a lot of choice. You but, didn't. Yeah. No, but I, I but know you what you're talking about. But you also had weapon choice. So, you know, even like small things like being able to pick up and choose different oh, weapons in the you first could do game. That more for Cybertron, yeah. And now they, you know, yeah, you're you playing in the that. same mode, but you can't change weapons out. So, you know, they're right. a little limited that way, too. Yeah. It just it, little things like that made it feel a little more constricted, yeah. in my opinion. I, can see I, I, I thought it was, a, I really enjoyed the story. Uh, I happened to see the third Transformers movie, um, and it did. It led up to it. I thought it was fantastic, cool. and it answered some I, of the questions I had I at the, the movie. Was pretty good, too, yeah. Yeah, and I, I enjoyed the fact that the, because War of Cybertron, you essentially, well, you fought, you know, you were the, the Autobots, and then you fought the big, I already forgot his name, the Godzilla-looking guy. Mm -hmm. And then you went and fought Metroplex mm -hmm. as a Decepticon. So essentially you were playing the same route, mm -hmm. right. but different skins. And this is the same type of thing, which I thought was fantastic, except when they always throw in, like, Starscream. So now you get into a flying situation. Yeah, and I will say nice I, variety I really like the variety. Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot. The levels, and and yeah. some of them looked really great. That that flying one with Starscream was I thought really well done. Yeah, yeah. I like thought, it was pretty tight. I thought I thought the graphics were fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
I really enjoy the fact that when I'm in robot mo- mode and I'm, when I'm jumping and then just transforming yeah. and then you hit the ground and you're gone. Yeah. And I thought that was really, I, it's just so, it feels fluid to me. Right. But I did much find, like War for Cybertron yep, did. Yeah. I did find there was a lot more uh, focus on longer driving periods. Yeah. Like in the other one, you would do driving to cover some distance and there was a couple where yeah. you would have to drive. But this almost felt like a racing game in some areas. Well, it, And I hated that because I thought the controls in the car were ass. See, I liked them. I thought the controls for the car were okay. I just kept... I didn't like them in stealth mode. My my, like my only problem was when you switch from robot mode to stealth mode. You know, I, I, I saw a review kind of complaining that the, the full vehicle mode was controlled by the right stick instead of a, a left stick like you would have with most mm-hmm. driving games. But actually, I didn't have too much problem with that because as I was in stealth mode, you maneuver around like you're in robot mode. And so, mm-hmm. you know, my turning was already on the right stick. Yep. I didn't have that problem, but going from robot mode to stealth mode because you have sort of a zoom on stealth mode as well but it moves from the left trigger to the left bumper button and so i would constantly go to zoom in and transform into the yep. vehicle mode yep. and the vehicle automatically goes forward so i would just like fly ahead into like a ravine or yep. something like that i yeah. did that too I, I didn't do it that often but it, it was a but, partial but, frustration but there was so much uh, not so much but there was enough of a change of controls that i would get flustered sometimes and like like you said i would just like hit mm-hmm. the wrong things when i'm like trying to do something else yeah because there were so many different control options and i didn't like when i was driving and the boost button was that a button right no the boost was the uh right bumper button. there was something else that was That's i jump. had to take my That's jump. Was a, it jump, maybe? jump i had to take something off of the stick that i was using to like turn with to do something else and i don't know what it was mm-hmm. i can't remember what the problem was that i was having you can't use felt the like stick so and long. hit a at the same time well, it's my monster thumbs must be. <laughs> yeah, it must be. Yeah, <laughs> that, uh, yeah. I, 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 I had that. I had that same problem. There was. I had that same problem. I don't know. I think it was to jump, but I was in a turbo and I needed to get to something. And I remember there was, it was something just that was a, really it, awkward about yeah, it. I couldn't move my hand because then we were talking about a game yeah. just a little bit ago where there was that <clears throat> control and you had to control and shoot. That. That's exactly what yeah. it made me feel like. Yeah. In. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I, my one complaint is that Soundwave was a car, but um, <laughs> he was a other, car and more for Cybertron too. Well, because that was he was on Cybertron. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not a good reason. He wants he his was, Earth version. He was to also be a, a satellite. I think he's, a, but yeah, but you see, he's the, a triple changer. He is actually, <laughs> to be honest with you, he's a quadruple changer because he changes into something else in the movie. So. But the laser beak was awesome. Laser beak was like, fantastic. Like getting to play him was awesome. Like yep. flying through that. That was another thing where they changed it up, and I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Although I will say that I had an issue with that level, with the whole lava thing, and lots of re- like loading in the middle of me doing stuff. Did you guys have that? I had what a lot. What the of hell was wrong with that middle. level? Yeah. And oh, any, anytime those... you turn into full vehicle mode, it would be like, oh, hold on a second. Oh yeah. You would literally okay. stop and <laughs> those, load those checkpoint or I, I always felt yeah. like they were checkpoint because then probably, when I'd get when I die, I'd go yeah. back to like that one spot. Yeah. yeah. It was terrible. Yeah. It was I know pretty that. bad. It, it was even bad even when I was walking around in robot mode sometimes. Yeah. Like there was a lot of that. But you know it. Yeah. But there was fewer loading screens you know mm-hmm. what i mean mm-hmm. like separate screens for cutoff areas i don't know the, the one the one frustration i had was the star scream level where you were trying to land on this other giant autobot um and so the autobots flying around in the in the sky too and you know ma- maneuvering around and so the the problem i had was anytime you touched it you automatically transformed into robot mode and oh. so then, so I'd be like, okay, lining up, lining up, and then it kind of move, and I would bump into like a, a tail fin or whatever, and transform, and I'm falling, and so then I got transformed back into a jet, and now he's like a mile away, and I got to catch up to him again. Uh, yeah, and that was yeah, that was kind of I, I couldn't understand. I well, I think maybe they did that so that you didn't have to worry about transforming into robot mode when you actually got on top and kind of came yeah, down. Maybe. But but I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, why am I transforming? I don't transform when I bump into a wall. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. I don't know. They, you, I think you nailed it when you said it It felt like the other game, but like a little bit lighter. Yeah. A I lot mean, bit lighter, I, mean, I should it, say. It, if you were hoping that this was going to be the sequel to, for, to War for Cybertron, you know, just keep waiting. Because that yeah. that's coming. It's That'll be coming. coming. Yeah. This is more like War for Cybertron 0.5. But again. This is War for Earth. 
<laughs> but again, if you wanted a Transformers game made by people who know how to make a Transformers game, this, uh, that is a movie tie-in. That's what you're going to get here. It's a lot so. of fun. The multiplayer is... Uh, oh, yeah. You played some multiplayer. How yeah. It, it's. I think it's got fewer modes. I can't quite remember. I meant to go back to War for Cybertron and check that out, but it's, go, it's well, got... Well, War for Cybertron also had the like, class system, and that's gone, isn't it? No, the class system's still oh, there. Oh, it's still there. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. um, I had to switch across some of my colors and some of my players. <laughs> And names, even though you didn't play any multiplayer, yeah. No, I got it set up. <laughs> no, yeah, the class system's still there. You can still create your own uh, sort true. of custom characters for the classes yeah. and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Um, um yeah, and I, I had a, the advantage of a double XP weekend, so you know, I nice. I got through that get to level 20 with one character class uh, pretty easily, like in four missions. Nice. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, you know, it plays just like the multiplayer did before. So there's deathmatch, team deathmatch, and then conquest. And I feel like there was different modes in so, War for Cybertron, but I can't remember. Here's my question, too, about that, then. Uh, it seemed in the regular game that it was kind of almost overpowering to, like, stay in vehicle form. Mm-hmm. Is that the case in multiplayer? Were you finding that because you don't you have unlimited ammo? In, I didn't actually in like didn't stay. Form. I didn't stay in vehicle form very much in the okay. regular game because I, well, because I was trying to do melee combat to get my right. Multiplier me out. either. But, but but when you were um, in vehicle form, you had unlimited you know, ammo. You didn't I don't have to reload. Yeah. I don't think. So. Well, I mean, you don't have to reload, but you know, because in the game they tell you that your stealth mode ha- ha- basically has better armor. Yeah, and I didn't really notice too much. So you didn't notice like people like just difference. staying in vehicle form and then no, no, dominating. you don't see that a lot. Okay. Be- uh, hardly at all that's what you know, i was because the, me- the melee is still important uh you you want to use your cooldown abilities um and you can only use those in your robot mode okay um stuff like that yeah. okay cool yeah well, I mean, i'm glad because that, that's what i was worried about the multiplayer setup was pretty darn similar to great uh war for cybertron i had a lot of fun with it well there you go cool I, one of the levels for conquest was in that village that that first level with mm-hmm. bumblebee and uh uh, it was a lot of fun because you could just jump on top of the buildings and like basically kind of run across the top of the buildings and uh, <laughs> come down on people as they're driving around. Yeah, that's good, really neat. Good now, times. Now, does Bumblebee talk? No, <laughs> he he does, <laughs> but not in a language that we can understand. <laughs> he talks via radio. Does he talk in Bayonese? Serious radio. R two D two. No, it's radio. <laughs> It's, it sounds mostly not, not like in the Tom game. Hanks. It sounds like mostly Tom not, Hanks. In the game, he's like... <laughs> he talks like Tom Hanks? <laughs> and it, it's, it sounds like a lot of Tom Hanks voice clips in the in the movie. Really? Sounds like it. <laughs> like from Money Pit? Somebody should, yeah. t- somebody should tell Tom Hanks. And Booze and Buddies? <laughs> More so than that, than Money Pit. There's a lot of Booze and Buddies. <laughs> and the burps. He's always like, <laughs> Booze and Buddies, Booze and Buddies. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you... Good old Bumblebee. I was just trying to derail the show again, and I did, so that's all I cared about. Is it a derail if we go along with it? No. (laughs) You guys ruin everything. Defused. We're all about... You guys ruin all my ruin moments. (laughs) I could ruin Transformers 3 for you. You So could I. I could go see it. I got ruined. (laughs) (laughs) You do do that a lot, Jeremy. Why do you... That... I know. I try not to do it on the show, but... Uh, that's my the job. entire the entire ride up here and ride back home. It's just it's he says something. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of annoying. Derp, <laughs> derp. I'm Sean. Derp, 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 derp. Oh, derp you. <laughs> Is that it? Are we done? <laughs> yes. All right. I'm uh, done. Programming note for folks: uh, we don't really know what's going on with our show. Uh, we're most likely going to be skipping a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think is what we've decided on at this point, uh, unless that changes. But if it changes, you'll know because you'll be happy and you'll have us early. Uh, but uh, I plan at this point that we're going to be gone for an extra week this time around. I will be in San Diego next week. and Shirking your duties. Shirking my duties and my clothing, probably. <laughs> wow. Uh, no, I'm, that's not, not at all. <laughs> Depends on who I meet, I guess. <laughs> I'll be we'll dirt. See how going for your adult baby party. I'm gonna be. <laughs> I don't even. I, I don't want to know anything about that. Derp and I don't even want to. I want to unhear that. <laughs> Shirk in my clothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so you won't be joining the furry party. This I time. will be in San Diego. <laughs> Craig will be on vacation too. So, I will. and Sean will be. I just wanted to throw you under the working train. like a slave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So we'll be skipping a week, uh, but when we come back, I will probably have some stuff to say about San Diego, probably cry about my disappointment of things I missed out on, things I didn't get to do. Oh, darn it. I didn't meet all the stars I wanted to meet. I didn't meet a bunch of famous people. (laughs) (laughs) 
I went yeah. to a comic book convention to meet a bunch of people from TV and didn't get to see any of them. Yeah, that's pretty much the majority of people. That's there. how it is now. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But just a reminder, signedinpodcast.com. That is our website. You can find a link to our forums on there, our Twitter feed, our Facebook fan page, all the other episodes um, and the other pseudo radio shows that you cats do. Word. In various forms. <laughs> In various forms. Stealth mode uh, form, mostly. Yeah. Comments. <laughs> comments at signedinpodcast.com. That is our email address. Email us anytime. Comments, questions, suggestions, mm -hmm. uh, jokes. I sometimes do like shows jokes. in the forms of a helicopter. Recipes. <laughs> You're not a transformer. Don't don't email. I don't want recipes. That you know of. You don't. You do want recipes? Why okay. not? Sean would like recipes, so send us anything. Cookie recipes. Poison recipes. <laughs> send us anything. <laughs> I will not pass this along to Sean. Um, and if you find us on iTunes, please leave a review. That would be greatly appreciated. Three parts rat poison. <laughs> Next episode. And done. Like I said, I'll be talking about some... I'm just steamrolling through. I don't even care. It's like two, you can watch... You could separate the audio onto different channels, and then they could like take out an earpiece and listen to Look, two different shows. I, I like do I that like to give this. I like to give the audience value. I know, and so yeah. they can have two shows at the same time. They can listen to you drone on. We jam pack, <laughs> or I, listen to Sean and well, I. One of us, fun. one of us. I'm usually that go-to guy. One of them's talking, and the other guys. Oh, Sean! It's Sean's it's, fault. It's like those old Fleischer Popeye <laughs> cartoons where he would just be muttering all the time yeah, in the that's background. Me. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where all the jokes were was the muttering <laughs> next episode uh i'll talk about some san diego stuff probably Miss explosion not, man I, I think i get to check out some stuff a little game Miss explosion man's coming out yeah. this week yeah summer of arcade will be starting by the time oh, we do right. our next show uh oh, that's right yeah so there's a there's lot a of, of shit coming about. out by the way how terrible is it that they are, are giving away a free game for buying all the summer of arcade shit but yes. uh one is a connect game I know. Mm, that's, that's why true. they're doing it. What the fuck? I'm not going to buy a $150 Connect so I can get a free $15 game. Uh, that's a good I, point. Also, you can buy them for me. This also, is... you shouldn't be buying a $10 Connect game that's available for a dollar on most things. <laughs> just so you can flail your arms around in front of the TV. Well, that's a, that's a valid reason. <laughs> I do that all the time. Well, good. Now you have a $10 game that you can do it And with. win. <laughs> you can now win. Now you can actually get points for doing right. it. You can <laughs> beat a bunch of watermelons up and you win. <laughs> Yay, fruit Maybe chopper. Maybe it's got more. To more it. more fruit? Yes. More ninjas. <laughs> now with more now fruit. Now with more flailing. <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah, just move is... your finger around rapidly when you could move your whole body? <laughs> That's more exercise. But more importantly, Miss Explosion Man's coming out. Yes. And I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. I get to play it for like two days and then go on vacation <laughs> for a week. Congrats. Well, I think it came out, the Explosion Man came out when I went to San Diego last time. Mm -hmm. And so it came Sounds out the right. while I was at San Diego, and I didn't get to play it till I got home, because I'm a baby and cried about it. <laughs> <laughs> what else is new? True. <laughs> Said it, kids. <laughs> I want to give a special shout out to one of my Twitter followers, Wolvie75, because every time he sees anything, or she, um, I'm yeah, assuming assume. it's a he, I assume it's a he, any time that he or she sees anything, he sends me a, a Twitter hit about the avatar award or what games are. <laughs> i love it it's like theory like, hookup it, he's awesome it, nice. so keep him coming thank you man nice nice he is your single source for <laughs> avatar information well you guys we, don't we, help me out we just say that shit till the show <laughs> then you're like oh you. man you know, i'm like i could have bought that plane i had a war hat <laughs> <laughs> i did tell you about trents i know <laughs> you did <laughs> i got my shirt all right <laughs> see you in three weeks kids later enjoy your summer later